Good afternoon, everyone. We uh, welcome you to the celebration of life for one Samuel Isaac Best. We are glad that you could be here to celebrate uh, his life with the family and with other friends. Those of you who have traveled from a long distance, we welcome you. Those of you who knew Sam as a colleague, we welcome you. Those of you who knew Sam as a loving family member, we welcome you. And those of you who knew Sam as a church member, we welcome you. Uh, we celebrate his life today. And uh, in so doing, we will start off with In Christ Alone. That will be uh, the hymn that we will start off with. Before we sing that song, will you bow your heads with me just for a moment as we pray? Our great God and our Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for another day. We thank you for your love, dear God. And we thank you, Father, that your presence is here. And as we celebrate Sam's life, Father, we pray that we also would glorify you. In the name of Jesus, let everyone say, Amen. In Christ alone, can we start off with that song?
At this time, we will have the eulogy by Lorianne McDonald. Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. Um, my name is Lorianne McDonald. I'm the niece of Ruth Best, and I've come to read Samuel's life story as written by her. Sam was, writ was born in San Fernando, Trinidad on April 7, 1952. He was the youngest brother of 10 children. Growing up in Trinidad was an adventure for Sam. He loved to be in the kitchen with his mother and sister Mavis. He enjoyed food, so he learned to prepare many tasty dishes. He was very resourceful and found a way to earn extra money by having a fruit and vegetable stand. While in Trinidad, Sam accepted Jesus as his personal savior, was baptized, and went to church as a young man. He also learned the trade of welding. Sam came to Canada in 1977 and settled in Winnipeg. He has two daughters, Margaret and Faith. Sam first worked in a foundry but with his welding skill, he was able to get a job with Motor Coach Industries where he was for many years. He drove bus for first, for first Student Canada after leaving Motor Coach. Sam enrolled in the healthcare aid program through Herzing College and graduated. Sam loved life, and if you asked him how he was any day, his reply would be fabulous. He was known among his friends as Mr. Fabulous. Sam was active in Silver Heights Church with various duties and volunteered at the Henderson Highway Church with the Pathfinder Club, where he enjoyed outdoor activities of hiking, canoeing, and camping. He also assisted with the food bank and set up a community lunch program at the Adventist Community Services. Shoveling snow and cutting the grass for the church and seniors or handicapped was a joy for him. Biking was his favorite activity, and because he had a knee injury, it was easier to get around. He talked to me into getting a $400 bike years ago, so I could join him biking to the park and other places. We did a camping trip to the West Coast and brought our bikes along so we could see the sights. We especially enjoyed Banff and climbing Sulphur Mountain. We also climbed Grouse Mountain in Vancouver, which was quite challenging. Getting together with friends for food and board games was especially enjoyable for Sam. Sam spent much of his time with his grandson, Trey. As he was growing up, they played board games, went bowling, shopping, and biking. Sam taught Trey how to fix his bike. Sam became ill, which progressively caused him to lose his independence. This was a difficult transition for him. Despite this, Sam continued to read his Bible each morning. He held on to the hope of one day soon becoming a new creation in Christ. Sam passed away early Saturday morning to rest from all of his suffering and pain. Thank you.
I registered. Don't start. I just told her, don't start crying. It's too late. <laughs> it was really good to see those pictures. Just around the bend, many trials will come before I reach my journey's end. Through them I'll be faithful, and I'll walk. My Savior says to me The streets of gold and the gates of pearl. I know that I'll forget my every struggle in this world. Oh, oh every pain and heartache, oh, they'll quickly fade. going to sing it again. <laughs> I wanted to share, um, you know, my parents got married in this church. My sister and I grew up here. Uh, the truth is I'm still resolving my feelings about my dad. You know, there's the feelings range. It ranges from childlike happiness at finding out 
that he was so excited. I was on the way that he named me before he even knew what gender or anything I was. And um, then you know, also, you know, he, he was fun. He was a fun dad. Um, but then sometimes he would withdraw and we would feel sad about that. And then you started to slowly trust him again because he sought reconciliation. Uh, after I had my son Trey, my dad uh, took me to the forks, he sat me down, he apologized for some of his years of silence. And then I started to feel closer to him. Um, he opened up about some of his struggles and he opened up about the things that he hoped for, things that he hoped for myself and for my son. Uh, also, he started to get really proud of all of the grandchildren that just kept multiplying and multiplying. <laughs> no, not multiplying and multiplying. There's only three. <laughs> yeah, so um, I am really glad about the pictures you found, Ruth. It is a beautiful slideshow, thanks. My dad, he did help so many people. Um, he helped them in a variety of ways. And some of you called me or you pulled me aside and you shared how he helped you, how he impacted your life. And I saw him personally help take care of this church. I saw him clean the grounds. I saw him shovel the snow in the winter. And all the churches uh, that he helped, I know there's lots of members who um, can say the same thing. He pitched in, he helped, he, anyone needed help, show up for them. He befriended people. And uh, he became a person who built relationships. So on Friday, May 5th, um, we hugged, not knowing that it would be the last hug. So I'm thankful for that hug. And I'm thankful for the comfort he gave me. During the fall, I was struggling a bit. And I showed up at the nursing home and my dad, you know, he's there, he's ill, but he got fatherly and he gave me a hug. And he's just letting me cry on his shoulder. And as he's giving good advice, like be patient with people and just love them even when they're tough to love. And uh, he listened. He started to, like I started seeing him as a, a, a different person from some of what I saw as a child. So I'm thankful also that he was there for my son. Hopefully my son has some memories to share too. And I wanna thank you all for your care and love during this time. And I wanna thank Ruth for organizing this service. Thank you. I just wanna share some memories. Um, you know, I was just thinking about my love for nature that I didn't know that I had as an adult. <laughs> Um, going camping with the kids um, probably came from him. Um, I remember him taking us canoeing, um, taking us canoeing. Um, he taught me how to drive on the frozen lake. That might be... And do donuts. Yeah. Yeah. And um, At Lockport. <laughs> he would take friends, family friends, and I, and, and Faith. He would take us swimming, so... He was able to do um, a lot of activities with us growing up. So thank you, Ruth, again, for putting this together. And thank you for the slideshow. <laughs> or, you're, you're pointing. To, thank my you. My son was to <laughs> say you, something. One moment. I'm going to stay here while my son uh, says his words. Hello, everyone. Uh, me and my grandfather used to like to go for bike rides, uh, for those who know. Hi, Auntie Tannis. Um, he was such a very good man, and he taught me a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Taught me how to fix my bike, so I always have that. He gave me some tools, and that's about it, but we done, we done a lot, so. And you were friends. Yeah, I was the closest with him. <laughs>
Hello, everybody. Ruth called me, and um, asked me if I'd help out with doing dainties, and I'm like, oops. They don't have any at Safeway. And then that's a, an area that I'm like, don't have a clue. Then she said, or asked, would you be willing to read scriptures? I jumped at the chance. I knew I could do that. So she gave me four, and I'm trying to get it down pat so it, it's smooth. She has me reading John 14, verse 1 to 3, and it says, the way, the truth, and the life. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my house, in my father's house, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may also be. And the next one. Okay. Gotta get the number here. Nope. Okay. First Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. It's underneath the category of our final victory. And it says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. And the third one. Revelation 21, verse four. One to four. Oh, this is beautiful. There's a, a line ahead of it I'm going to read, and then it really paints a beautiful picture. I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And there's one more. Romans 8, 38 and 39. It says under God's everlasting love, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ, our Lord.
I will be reading the tributes for those that could not join us for today. First, I'll be reading the tribute given by Mavis Best, Sam's sister. I have not only lost a brother, I've lost a dear friend. All my memories of Samuel, childhood, youth, or adult life are filled with happiness. As children, we laughed together, played together, shared adventures together. My earliest memories of our older brothers and sisters were from Samuel. They were much older than us and migrated early to work and study. I was too young to remember much, but he always shared stories of things they did and how they did them. Samuel was my mom's joy. Whenever she got really sick, the doctor would say, call your brother. He would fly down to Trinidad, and as soon as she saw him, that was her medication. When I moved to New York, he came whenever possible. I always look forward to those visits. He was even my father giver. Everyone with whom I shared news of his passing was recalling pleasant memories they held. Most persons remember the time when he was among a group of campers who got lost in the forest after taking what they thought was a shortcut back to the campsite after a hike one late afternoon. At camp, some prayed all night while able-bodied ones formed a search party. Police found them next morning just as, a, just as a couple persons living in the forest found them and made hot chocolate and baked for them. Val, one of those lost states that Samuel could have gone on by himself and found his way out. He was that kind of person, but he chose to stay with the group knowing she was there. He was always in an adventurous situation. I was around, though not in it. I was blessed to have him as a brother in many other ways. To Ruth, Margaret, and her boys, Faith and Trey, I offer you my prayers, thoughts, and well wishes during this time of your life to you and those whom I do not know. Just a brief reminder that this occasion is a time for us to recommit our lives to God and allow him to guide us as we are just pilgrims through his land. May he keep us living every day as if it were out or last. Be assured, God will hold us up with his righteous and powerful right hand. God bless you all richly. From Mavis, Sam's sister. Next, I'll be reading the tribute given by Paxter Maxi, as he was not here to join us for today. And it reads, To the bereaved family and friends, it was with great sadness that June and I received the news of the passing of Brother Sam Best. While we lived in Winnipeg, it was such a joy to have known Brother Sam. We had great times together and wonderful memories, which were formed over the years, will always remain with us. Brother Sam loved his Lord and lived a life of dedication to God for most of his life. While he has left behind the aches and pains of this life, we can be comforted in the fact that he is resting in the blessed hope of the second coming of his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Brother Sam lived to see many decades on this planet and earth and blessed many. Not many of us will be that fortunate. His Lord and Savior has seen it fit to call him to rest. While sad, let us rejoice in the fact that he came here. He fulfilled his divine duties. He touched many lives, and now he has responded to his master's call to rest. Therefore, let him rest in the blessed hope of the first resurrection. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. At that time, we will see him again. This time, it will not be for a century, it will be for eternity. May God grant you courage and hope. Sincerely, Pastor Emil Maxey and Sister June Maxey from the conference in Ontario. Thank you.
Good afternoon. Some of you have known Sam for quite some time, and uh, he's been around to uh, different churches, and you all have different memories of him. Uh, I'm wondering if there's a few of you who would like to just come up and say, hey, I remember this about Sam. Uh, now is the time to do that. Is there 
a few folks who would just like to come up, get right behind the mic one at a time, and just say, I have this memory of Sam, and I would like to share it. Is there anybody here who would like to do that? Don't be shy. Now is not a time to be shy. Yes, very good. Do we have a roaming mic? Yeah. First nightmare. Uh, his memory stayed with me good. This big guy, you know, and uh, full of muscles that uh, he came to me and he said, Hi, my name is Sam. And from then I always called him Sam because he was too big to be called. So I had to put a little name on him. So I called him Sam. And I remember him being faithful. He would be here. Uh, no matter how cold it was, or how snowy, snowy it was, Sam would be here shoveling the snow, pushing the snow, give you a warm welcome. He was, he was such a, a, a gentle, gentle fellow. I, yes. I, I really admired him. You know, he was a very nice guy. Uh, uh, he reminded me with a, another brother that passed, um, Patrick. Patrick Young, and another fellow, Bob Wall. There were three, three men in the church that you could depend on for cleaning in the spring, and they were always around the church. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a, Sam was a, I remember him as a very nice family man. And when we were younger, the handicaps, we didn't have a, we didn't have a lift. And you could always call him Sam. He was strong. He was just, just willing. He would, I would say, take it easy, Sam, I'm as we're bringing people up the stairs. <laughs> he, he was so uh, rich that day. He would help him out. Uh, we would bring him up the stairs in the chair. And I would say, Be take it easy, Sam. I'm not as strong as you are. You know, he was such a nice fellow. And, yeah. uh, you know, um, it's so sad to see how life, and time just, just, just rob us of our dignity, of our health. It just, you know, it, it's mm -hmm. just, it broke my heart the last time we spoke. You know, I said, Sammy, and he said, hey, Malcolm, how are you? You know, and time has a way with us that if, we, if we're not careful, it can rob us of this hope mm -hmm. that we have coming in when we all will be renewed and gain a new new body, you know? And yes. It's, it's, it's so sad, you know, when I, when I saw him. But, you know, we have that hope. And, and let's stay with that hope. And for his family, my deepest condolences from my wife and my, my family. So God bless you guys and stay strong because Sam was a very mm -hmm. strong man. You know, I, I can't wait, to, you know, when that time comes. I don't know if I still call him Sammy, but for me, he's always Sammy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there someone else who would like to just give us a memory? Can you stand the roving mic? Oh, there we go. All right, please. I also grew up in the church, and I remember Sam because we were part of the Pathfinders Club, and it was Brother Hubert Young, Brother Sam and Mrs. Bratwaite. So she took care of all the girls because Silva Heights did not have a Pathfinder Club. We all just came together on the one head in, which was just the Henderson Pathfinder Club. We were the Keystone Pathfinders. And we got the honor of going to um, Camp Borden because we we're going to show off our skills and we we're going to show how great we were. And I guess as young people, we were a bit energetic. And he said to us, hey, you guys, do you want to know how you can stay awake all night? And we're like, yeah, show us how. 
because we had two vans. So we were in the van with Sam and Hubert, and then there was another van. And he goes, if you just have some really nice warm milk, you can stay up all night. <laughs> and then he goes, do you want to try it? We're like, yeah, let's try it. And he kept pouring us milk, and we thought he was the coolest person because he wanted us to stay up late. And before you knew it, we were yawning, and then we all fell asleep. <laughs> and we're just like, hey, what happened? So on the way back, I guess he thought he got us. And we're like, did you stay up late? We're like, no, I don't know what happened after we drank the milk. So on the way back, he goes, so do you guys want to stay up late again? We're like, no. <laughs> and so he goes, so I guess you guys are smarter than you look. We're like, yeah. We're like, what was in that milk? He goes, nothing. We're like, are you sure? So that is my fondest memory of him. It's just hanging out in Pathfinders, him making it like a really good time. Yeah. Um, just having a great time. Nothing was ever too stressful for him. It was just he had a lot of energy with the young people that were there. And so to Sam, to, sorry, Margaret and Faith, and to Sister Ruth from the Emmons side, the Lewis's side of the family, our condolences go out to you guys. We'll continue to lift you up in prayer as you go through this difficult time. Mm, thank you. Up near the front, could you please stand? It was just a small moment, but I was um, having potluck, and I was sitting directly across from Sam, watching him eat food like he had never seen food before. Like he was filled, and I'm thinking, ooh, he likes this food, and Trey was feeding it more and more and more. And then at one point, I was getting up, I think, to go to the table, and Sam had stood up, and he put his arm out, and I'm like completely like taking he put his arm out to block me, and as I'm going forward, he pulled me right into his body. And I'm like, okay. And I just wrapped my arms around him and said, thank you very, very much, Sam. And I sensed this man is craving human contact, love, and hugs. So I wanted to hold on to him, and I just said, thank you so much, Sammy. <laughs> I wanted you guys to know that. <laughs> And Ruth had a wonderful man, wonderful, wonderful Christian man. God Thank bless you. Sammy. Thank you. I would just like to state the obvious and say that um, Sam's laugh um, will stick with me for the rest of my life. And um, uh, Ruth and um, my mom, Paulette, were... Um, very good friends like all throughout my childhood and I got to spend a lot of time uh, with Sam and um, just every time um, his his warm warm uh, greeting you know uh, yeah it's just um, his laugh his smile his spirit I will uh, I will definitely hold on to him in my heart and uh, I will miss him and I uh, love you Sam thank you mm. I came to Canada in 1976. In 1977, I was baptized as a Seventh-day Adventist. Sammy was a member of this congregation and was the most friendly, loving, caring brother that I met in those days. He took me in. I was very poor in the language and knowing the area and he began to give me a ride in his vehicle, taught me how to drive, and one day he took me to the White Shell Provincial Park for a, for a ride. And uh, then um, his marriage didn't work, his first marriage didn't work out very well, so he married Ruth, and he moved to another congregation. So we didn't get much in, in contact, but Sammy had always a place in my heart because he was a very nice man, very good friend, humble, mm. helpful. And uh, as we age, the years 
leave a mark on us. But there is a hope that we have, mm -hmm. that when Christ comes, we are going to be changed. The Bible says, the righteous is taken away from evil to come. Isaiah 57, verse 1. Precious in the eyes of the Lord and that is the death of his saints. And I want to be ready to meet some at the resurrection day and be a friend forever in the earth made new. Mm -hmm. So I came with sadness to say goodbye, but at the same time, with gladness, because we know the future in Christ Jesus. Mm. Thank you. Besides uh, Brother Orbe Lawrence here, sitting down here, does anyone here work with some at Motor Coats Industries? I work with uh, Brother Sam Coats Industries. Of course, he was, as mentioned in the bulletin, he was a welder. Uh, he is a welder at the R&D. We call it the uh, Research and Development Department. Now, I work on the other department, which I'm also a welder. And so, when I was a lead hand, every time we have problems, they would call Sam from the R&D because we used to call him the, the troubleshooter guy. Now, one thing that uh, I will remember about Brother Sam is that there seems to be no dull days when Sam is around because he's always positive. Even when we have challenges uh, working on a, on a complicated coach, uh, he's always, uh, you know, like, like smiling and uh, laughing, and it seems that uh, we are in difficulty, but, but Sam is around. It's, it's so encouraging. And whenever I used to joke with him and, uh, you know, the other guys there, whenever his lunchbox is missing, the other guys will say, you know, you ask Roly because they know already that uh, I would hit his lunchbox because he's, you know, he's a vegetarian. You know that, yeah? Sam is a vegetarian, and so, so they, they would joke, oh, yeah, Roly take your lunchbox because he knows that you are a vegetarian. He likes your, your food. <laughs> so <laughs> Sam, Sam would be, uh, you know, he was very professional. Even when we when send him out to, uh, you know, New Jersey or New York or Chicago for uh, you know, some retrofitting job for these expensive buses, he always conduct himself very professional. And I used, I remember one guy from New, New York uh, Transit Authority who used to call him. I said, you know, if you have, uh, we have problem here, just call that guy, the Mr. Uh, troubleshooter guy, they call him. He's a tall Mr. Shoot, troubleshooter guy. That's how they call Sam. And so in moral codes, he will be remembered as the guy who is always uh, uh, upbeat and happy and positive in spite of the challenges that we have in uh, working in the bus industry. So uh, to, to Faith, which is also uh, graduated at the same time with my daughter Marisa and uh, her sister Margaret, our condolences from the family. God bless. Thank you. There's uh, just one memory of my Uncle Sammy that sticks out in my head. Like, no tomorrows. Uh, I can't remember if it was a Saturday or a Sunday, but we were coming, either we were coming to this church or leaving this church. But Sammy was on his bike, and he was riding so fast. He, down Henderson that he could keep up with all the cars. And I remember us kids in the cars in the 70s there cheering him on, cheering him on. Look at Uncle Sammy, come on up, keep up, keep up with Uncle Sammy. Most amazing thing is uh, he was such a very physical man and uh, admired by all of my friends and family for, uh, for that and probably one of the reasons why I'm still a cyclist today. Thank you.
Ja. I remember uh, some, uh, especially when he was bringing um, his grandson, Trey, and he was very fond of him, and I used to cherish how their relationship was. And then the other one was, I remember him, how he was very helpful to Richard down there. He was taking him everywhere with his, with his car, and he was a good fr friend of him. So he was a, a good father, a good husband, and a good friend to people that I know. I cherish him with that one. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I met Sam when I was 13, and I came to the church uh, in 86. In a, he was always really kind and encouraging because I didn't have any family in the church. And uh, so every, so every Sabbath, he would encourage me to keep studying and keep staying faithful. And, and uh, my mom came a couple times, and he was very, very sweet and encouraging to her and I just remember him always saying yeah it's good life is good God is good you know yes man you know I just remember his easy attitude and and everything and he was always so loving and caring and it was it was always wonderful to see Sam and made me so happy yeah he was mm. he was great thank you I believe we're done are we done that was good. What a legacy Sam has left for all of us. Amen? And, and, and because I'm new and I haven't been back to Winnipeg in such a long time, I wanted to find out, who is this Sam? And here's what I found out. I found out he was very intelligent. I found out he was very keen. He knew the word of God. I found out he was a very active participant in the lesson study, and he liked to give his input. I found out he was a deacon extraordinaire, even, even when he was sick. I asked uh, the longest deacon I know in Winnipeg, uh, Deacon Joe Phillips, I says, what kind of guy was Sam? He said he was such a hard worker. He was always giving. That's the kind of guy that Sam was. He was an act of service guy. As a matter of fact, I've even heard stories, at least from my church in Silver Heights, that he was not feeling very well, and he was a deacon, and they had to... Uh, it was time to shovel the snow, and they had to hide the shovel from him so he could get a rest and not shovel the snow. And that's the kind of guy I found out that Sam was. Good guy. I found out he liked to ride his bike. He was a good bike rider, and I found out he loved to laugh. He loved to help people. And I found out something that every church pastor likes to hear. He was always early for church. And I like to hear that uh, about Sam. So to find out a little bit more, I talked to uh, Ruth and I said, do you have his Bible? And so I looked inside his, his Bible and I noticed that uh, around Psalms 22, uh, 23 and 24, it was really crinkled. He'd spent a lot of time there. And even Proverbs 22. Here's what it says in Proverbs 22. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. Uh, loving favor rather than silver and gold. That's what Sam was reading in Proverbs 22. And... Uh, also in Psalms 33, verse 34, it says, A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, so shall, you, uh, so shall poverty come in like a prowler. Ooh. So, so that just reinforces that Sam was a hard worker. Loved to, he loved to work hard. Well, some of you know even more about him. 
But one thing I have heard that Sam loved the Lord. Amen. He loved the Lord with all of his heart, and he loved to read the word. And I notice in his Bible, Psalms 23, right there. So I'm going to read it. Some of you know it by heart. Say it if you do. But this is what uh, that Sam was reading. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not what? Want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen? And that's what our Sam was reading as I looked through his Bible. He believed in the promises of God. John 11 takes us to a story that we all know very well. Uh, Jesus had some good friends in Bethany, Mary and Martha, and his good best buddy, Lazarus. Everybody ought to have a really good friend. And although John was called the beloved disciple, Lazarus was his buddy. And Jesus one day, as he was traveling about, he got the news. Your friend Lazarus is sick. And all the disciples said, well, we better get over there. Uh, we need a miracle. And uh, Jesus just kept on going. And he kept on going, kept on doing and uh, uh, can you imagine the, the, the runner, perhaps, who went back to uh, Mary and Martha? Did you tell him? Yes. Did he start back on his way? Right? No, he, he, he didn't. He just kept on going. And finally, the news, as Jesus kept on going, the news came, Lazarus is dead. That's it. And only then did Jesus go back. And as he went back, can you imagine the professional mourners over in this corner and the families over there? And there is Mary and Martha. Why, Lord? Why didn't you come sooner? Why didn't you fix it? Why didn't you heal it? And Jesus said, listen, I understand your pain. As a matter of fact, as everybody was there, and crying and weeping. The Bible records the two shortest verses in the Bible. Do you know what that is? Jesus wept. He just cried. He just cried and cried because his friend Lazarus was in the grave and he was all human, although all divine. And his friend had passed away and Jesus felt it. You know what that tells us? That Jesus loves Lazarus. And if Jesus loves Lazarus, guess what? He loves you and me. He loves us so much. God is absolutely nuts about you. Somebody say amen. He sent his only son Jesus to die on the cross for you and me. Why? Because he absolutely loves us so much. Even today, God loves you. God loves you so, so much. He's prevented disasters from befalling you. But guess what? If something does happen, the Bible says that Jesus is right there with us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Amen? And so here's Jesus crying for Lazarus, even though he knew he was going to resurrect him. And Jesus said, roll away the tomb. And he, and, and he said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came forth. He didn't even smell anymore. He came forth. Why is that so important? Because 
One day, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to meet Sam again. Amen? Paul even said it. He says, listen, I don't want you to mourn the way the heathen mourn. I don't want you to mourn the way the, the rest of the world mourns. Because we're Christians and we know better. Because one day, Jesus is coming again. He'll come in the clouds with 10,000 times thousands of angels. And he's coming to take us home. Amen? And one day, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we'll meet him. And Sam will be there. And we'll meet him. And we'll talk. And we'll ask him, say, what was it like to be dead? Sam liked to laugh. Remember that. And, 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 and so we'll talk, and then we'll make our way up to heaven. We don't need to grieve like the rest of the world grieves because one day we know that Jesus is coming soon to take us home. Amen? So, so uh, what do we do in the meantime? Number one, we be ready. Number two, uh, Jesus said, I give you a new commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. Jesus loved us and he wants us to love the rest of the world. Amen? So we need to love one another. Why? Because this is the way that heathens will know that there is a God. Because of our love for one another. And I got to be honest with you. A lot of people, you know, are worth loving. But there are some really unlovable people. Some of y'all are sitting right here, by the way. But here's what I want you to know. That we can love anybody if Jesus is in our hearts. Amen? So families shouldn't be angry at one another. Not at a time like this. Not when Jesus is coming so soon. Families need to love one another. How do we love one another? Well, 1 Corinthians 13 reminds us. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is long-suffering. Love doesn't keep any, 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 any wrongs or anything like that. Everything else may fail, but love never fails. Never. And that's the kind of God we serve. Pastor, what are you talking about? I'm talking about that Jesus loved us, and so we ought to go and love each other. And we start by loving our families. We start by loving our church members. And then we start by loving people in the world just the way that Jesus would. So, so here's what I'm saying tonight or this afternoon. Number one, that uh, we are not to mourn like the way other people mourn. <laughs> because we know that we will see Sam once again. But in the meantime, let's show the love of Jesus to each other. Amen? Let's show what a Christian love is all about. And Trey, Sam loved you. There's nothing that Sam would want more than knowing that he'll see you in the kingdom of God. So therefore, stay close to Jesus and watch what God will do with your life because God has a plan for you, Trey, and for everyone here. Well, I won't keep you long. I just wanted you to know as I looked into Sam's life and I see what a truly wonderful man he was. A good guy, a loving guy. And he loved the Lord. And because he loved the Lord, he would want you to love the Lord too. Amen? Amen. Amen. Before I have closing prayer, I'd like Ruth to, to come up. She's got a few words she'd like to say to you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, I so appreciate um, when I look out into the audience, the wonderful friends and the family that's here, and uh, I just really appreciate your presence here to uh, remember Sam and to support myself and Sam's family, our family. Anyways, um, you are all a blessing to me, and you have been in the past, and I just want to say that I had a lot of support and help to put on Sam's remembrance today. 
And I just want to thank all the ones who uh, worked hard and um, were there for me and for Faith and Margaret and Trey. Thank you so much for coming. We have a closing song. And it's called, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Shall we stand? Father, we thank you, Lord, for the celebration of life of Samuel Isaac Best. We thank you, Lord, that you are here. And we are so very, very grateful for that. Lord, you're coming soon, so very soon. And we want to be ready. So help us, Lord, to be ready. And in the meantime, Lord, help us to love people the way that you loved us. In the name of Jesus, let everyone say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. ...are served, and on behalf of uh, the Best family, we thank you again for being here. <laughs>